Hi everyone. So I'll just start with the simple stuff. So Loch Gur, what does that mean? Loch of course means lake. Gur is the Irish or Gwir for a hatchery, to hatch. Um, so Loch Gur is associated with rebirth and the act of hatching, giving birth, rebirth. So Gur Achur Er Ivica means to hatch eggs. So Loch Gur means the lake of the hatchery. So that means that Loch Gur is associated with fertility, rebirth, uh, the cycles of life. And I think that Loch Gur Stone Circle, what are they trying to teach us? They're trying to teach us the mechanics of creation because all of nature, our anatomy, biological life on this planet is all um, underwritten by mathematics. You can see it everywhere. It's beautiful, like the geometry within a flower. And Venus, or Anya, is, asso is associated with the goddess of love, creation, beauty. And when we see beauty in a flower, what do we see? We see this beautiful pattern, geometric pattern. And the amazing thing about Venus is, during Venus's eight-year uh, cycle in the sky, it creates this beautiful rose petal pattern. It's called the Rosabelle. Anybody can Google this, and scientists are baffled. They don't understand why that Venus creates this beautiful rose pattern in the sky. But the interesting thing is that it creates a five-point star in the middle, and then it creates this beautiful rose around that. So here in Loch Gur, if you stand, and Billy might show you better than I can, with your fingers like this, the sun ship and the moon ship, and you bring them together, you'll see that this V notch here on the entrance into the stone circle lines up perfectly with your fingers. And what's that telling you? It's that, that's telling you that all the geometry we need to construct, whether it's the Great Pyramid, the stone circle, um, it's all encoded in our, not only the heart, but also in our human anatomy. And the bones on your fingers, you'll see your thumbs have two bones, so they bend like in half and your fingers each have three bones, so they bend like this. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fourteen on this hand. Fourteen plus fourteen is twenty-eight, and that's the cycle of the moon, or ovulation. So it's all in our anatomy. It's all in, you know, Leonardo da Vinci, the Vitruvian man, what's that, a five-point star? Yeah. So we believe that Anya or Venus has an effect on beauty in this planet, biological beauty, how we develop in the womb, how we, how we have perfect proportions. What, you're not born with one arm that's 10 foot long and another arm that's one foot long. Everything is beautifully proportioned. And you'll find that the period of gestation, pregnancy lasts exactly nine months. And what's nine months? Well, nine months is the cycle of Venus. So Venus spends nine months as the morning star, then it disappears from view and it re-emerges as the evening star for nine months. So gestation and the Venus cycle are linked perfectly. And where we're standing right here is 58 degrees or 57.3, 57.3, which is the radian. So there, thereabouts, between 57.3 to 58 degrees, that's, that's where we're standing here, 58 degrees northeast. The sun rises just over here. Well, what's 58 degrees? Well, in the terms of gestation, 58 degrees is eight weeks. And eight weeks is when an embryo becomes a fetus. It's a very, very important stage in pregnancy development. So 58 days corresponds with 58 degrees, which is where we are here, in around that number. And why is that important? Well, in this moment of pregnancy, the infant develops its pineal gland in the brain. And that's, in many religions, see, viewed as the seat of the soul. And in the Buddhist beliefs, they pray for um, the past, someone who passed away, they pray for roughly seven weeks so that they find a new soul to inhabit. And it just so happens that that's when the pineal gland forms in an infant during pregnancy. And that's what I believe, that's why I believe the entrance to the stone circle is positioned here. Now we'll have to do more testing to make sure that's correct, but the interesting thing is that if you stand here in the entrance into the stone circle, you'll see there's another notch on the other side of the sun circle. So this V notch here, and you can all do this yourselves, lines up perfectly with your finger, 
four, what is it, 40, uh, 60, uh, 80? 80, 40, 60, yeah. and then 80, 60, 40 so, on the other side. Yeah, so this, this entrance lines up with 40, uh, 80, 40, 60. 80, 40, 60, and the notch on the other side, 80, 60, you have 40. to turn it clockwise, yeah. and it's like this. So where we're standing is like this, and when you go to the other end, you turn your fingers like this, and it matches perfectly. So that's the geometry, it's there in our hands, that's all we need. The cubit is our elbow to the tip of our middle finger, that's how the Egyptians built the pyramid with the cubit, it's all encoded in our body. And the amazing thing is that where we're standing right here, if you were to draw a line across the map of Ireland, southwest, where do you think you'd end up? Perfectly on the great Skellig, Skellig Michael. This entrance is lined up with Skellig Michael, exactly. And anyone can go home and Google, Google Maps and do this themselves. And why is that? Well, a very, very, very special event happened quite recently on June the 21st, 2020. This was a very unique uh, summer solstice because in Ethiopia, there's a very special shrine called Lalibela next to what's called the Jordan River. And this summer solstice, an eclipse occurred. And this eclipse occurred and passed directly over this temple in Ethiopia called Lalibela, a very, very, very special place, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And the moment that the annular sun eclipse passed over this, at the exact same time, the galactic equator and the ecliptic, which is called the, the galactic cross, which is in the sky, the Milky Way, where the Milky Way meets the ecliptic, all the planets are on the ecliptic. So this lined up with the sunrise at this moment. And this hasn't ever, never happened before. It was in June the 21st, 2020, that sunrise. And while that was happening in Ethiopia, which had a three hour time difference with Loch Gur, the sun hadn't risen here yet. But at that precise moment that the sun, solar eclipse passes over this temple in Ethiopia, Venus rose on the horizon where? At 58 degrees, right here and Venus moves one degree every eight years. So the last time that Venus lined up with this entrance on the summer solstice was 360 degrees in the circle multiplied by eight years, 2,880 years ago. And what is that? 860 BC. 860 BC is associated with an event in the Bible called the Battle of Armageddon and where the prophet Elijah defeats the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, right? And this is where it gets bizarre. So Skellig Michael is aligned with Mount Carmel in Israel. Between Mount Carmel and Skellig Michael are a series of shrines dedicated to the Archangel Michael, such as uh, St. Michael's Mount in Cornwall, um, Mont Saint-Michel in Brittany, um, Sacred San Michele near, near Turin, um, there's a shrine in Greece and it passes through Rhodes and then it ends up in Mount Carmel. And that Michael line, which runs from Skellig Michael to Mount Carmel, is perpendicular to the rising sun on the 21st, 25th of December every year. So Michael represents the masculine and that's why it's this upward facing triangle. And if you look down upon Skellig Michael, you'll see the serpent. That's the way the monks laid out the rocks. So that represents the masculine. And where we are here now is Loch Gur. That represents the union, the sacred union of the masculine and feminine. Because you have the downward triangle right here and Skellig Michael is the upward triangle. And that's the Star of David, is the, is the, the two triangles crossing like this. And that's also the symbol of Freemasonry, the upward triangle masculine and the feminine. So Loch Gur is the crossing point between these energies, the masculine energy and the feminine energy. And Jerry discovered that the center of the stone circle here is on the golden number. The golden number. Nowhere else in the world no. can you find that. Because King Henry, not only did he start the corporation, as Billy says, but he also put the prime meridian through Greenwich in London, through the palace. He took it from uh, Egypt. He took it from the Great Pyramid of Egypt and he put it in London to confuse everyone. They were throwing us off the scent for hundreds and hundreds of years. But in Loch Gur, this is what anchors us to the truth is true studying Loch Gar, we can find the truth because all of these tyrants like King Henry, they've been trying to confuse us and throw us and scramble us and, but now we're bringing it all back and truth is truth is truth it, and the numbers don't lie. 
So that's how we can be so confident what we're saying today is anyone can go home and, and do these calculations for themselves. Anyone can come here with a tape measure and measure this thing for themselves. If they don't believe us, that's okay. But it's all here in Loch Gur, and that's why Loch Gur is the lake of the hatching rebirth. This is the place of rebirth. This is where you learn about the mechanics behind creation. This is where you commune with God because nature is God's creation, you know. And that's why today when we have so much pollution and so much uh, environmental woes, we need to go back. We need to go back to living in harmony with nature. And that's what the ancient Irish people, the ancient Gaelic people can teach us. And as Billy said, that's the sovereignty. If you're not that's, that's where sovereignty comes from. Yeah. That is where sovereignty comes yeah. from. And we have to respect that. Yeah. No, Fionnall mentioned the pentagram, folks. They left the pentagram. Let's try and get this mic out. Sorry. I know.